system, because when I ran in 1974, the guy that was the state rep from my district, and you're around Jackson Park on the southwest side of Milwaukee, which is a park designed by the Olmstead, uh, so a beautiful park, and uh, our assembly member, a guy named Earl Keegan, uh, he was all for it. He wanted to speed up the traffic and solve the congestion problem. He was going to build this freeway right through the middle of the park. And I ran against him and I beat him. And that stopped it. And I went to Pat Lucy, who was a really smart governor from Ferryville. Maybe that's why he was so smart. He was from Ferryville. But um, anyway, he, he said, he, I went into his office. I said, I won the election on it. This road is going to hurt the neighborhood. And he, he finally, after talking to him a few times, he agreed, and that was the end. But you have to raise hell. And the, the elected officials need to know how you feel about it and tell them. I mean, it's, I, I saw that site, I think, today, didn't I? It's a waste of money. The money's mo there already. Yeah, the money's there, but if they haven't spent it, then they can, uh, they can use it for something else. Whenever politicians want to spend money foolishly, they always open their flank to attack. So, you know, that's what will turn it around. You've got to raise hell. And you can be polite about it if you want, or not. But usually, at the beginning, you want to be less polite. Later on, when they start to listen to you, you be more polite. Yeah. change those plans, you know, and be flexible and just pave some of our streets, like Highway 16 or anything, just what we already have here, just yeah. maintain what we have here, where is the infrastructure of the, what's already in place, but maintain. And yeah, that, you're, 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 you're being logical, which right, is... Right, and you know what he said to me, he said, for 10, it's been on the book for 10 years, I said, I don't care, change it, you should have some flexibility, we don't need it out there to yeah. run into the, you know, where a passing lane would have been fine, you know, and just yeah. common sense again, and use this money to repave streets where you have 150,000 people on in this metropolitan area. I See, now they used to have more. They used to have more common sense before. I mean, I think it was a mistake for the federal government to ever get into transportation, because in Canada there's no high, national highway program. And there's no national transit program. And all of the cities have pretty good transit. Toronto has fantastic transit. And even with a mayor, the crack-addicted mayor who hates transit, but the city is overcoming him, I guess. Um, but anyway, they have good transit with no national transit program. And they, the highways somehow connect between provinces. Somehow they meet without the equivalent of an of a interstate highway program. I mean, when people talk about the Interstate Highway Program, like, like it's like winning World War II, the greatest generation, the Interstate Highway System. Every advanced industrial country in the world has highways that go between cities. I mean, it's not anything unusual. The thing unusual about the U.S. is we've been dumb enough to put them into places where they don't belong. But if you have the highways, you have the interstate right out here from Minnesota into Wisconsin. Yeah. Hey, don't fix a pothole. They won't do right. a dang stinking thing. It's been that way for how many years? At least pay. But they used to know how to do it. And I, that's, I'm going to just make one more example of this. Remember when you'd come to a, a town, and there'd be something called a truck route that would go around the outer edge of the grid, and then at the other side, it would rejoin the, the highway that, that went straight through the town. Now, if you go straight through the town, you'd go like... 15, 20, 25 miles per hour to stop at Harriet's Cafe or whatever, and then uh, keep going. You'd probably use that if you had business in the town. But if you're like a truck driver going, then you'd go around the outer edge. But the difference between the two, like Verona would be a good example. The difference between the going through the middle of the town, which is a straighter route, or faster around the outer edge, was pretty close. So maybe one day you go one way, one way or the other. But then they changed that. Now they've got the, Verona has this sort of Mercedes-Benz test track or NASCAR facility that you drive around Verona 
And so that then the downtown ends up with distressed real estate, you know, antique stores, and, and that's about it. And, and that's, that's because the scale changed so much, and the DOT people just are stuck on the big scale, and they need to look more sensitively. You know, sometimes the big scale is not appropriate, and you need to re rediscover old forms like the truck route or the multi-way boulevard. Or there's all kinds of little things. And the only way they'll do that is if people complain. But the same kind of people, the engineers that we find it so hard to deal with today, the, the people that did these other clever things like the truck route, they were engineers too. So it's not just that they're bad. It's that the, the form is the wrong form. And it, it needs to be changed. And that's why we've been working on that book. And so one thing you can do is you can download that book for free from ITE.org uh, or you can buy a copy if you want to have hold one in your hand. Um, but if you show that to DOT people, they have to understand, you know, it's, a, it's an accepted practice of ITE and it's FHWA, the Federal Highway Administration says it's okay. Even Texas DOT backed down when the city of El Paso used that book and said, hey, wait a minute, this is FHWA approved and then they got the road the way they wanted it. All right. Uh, How about the uh, property tax split, like in Pittsburgh and Scranton, where they bring the tax to off the buildings to free up investment Great and idea. put it higher on the site value to stop active land speculation? Yeah, that's wonderful. The single tax, Henry Joy George uh, came up with the idea in the 19th century, and it, it makes a lot of sense. The trouble it runs into is that property owners that own uh, land that doesn't have much on it, uh, actively lobby against it. And usually it's state law that has to be changed, so that makes it even harder. Uh, so in Milwaukee, when the issue was brought up, and I always supported it, uh, it was the parking lot owners, the surface parking lot owners, were the particularly vehement opponents of land value taxation. But it makes a lot of sense. It would, people would have to improve their property, keep it up. Uh, and the land doesn't disappear if you tax it. So that was Henry George's theory, is that it was one tax that had a lot of positives and very little negative. It's all true, but it sounds terrible at a city council meeting when there's a bunch of mad people in the room. Um, on one-way pairs, have there been a small city like La Crosse where they've removed one-way pairs? Obviously, there's examples of taking out three. Yeah, well, we took out a lot of one-ways in Milwaukee, and... I, do, I did it on an experimental basis. I would go, I would have the Public Works Department go out, change it to a two-way street, and then as a test, and that was our way of, you know, fending off the criticism. Oh, it's just a test. But the test never ended. <laughs> and so, but, and it worked fine. Uh, there is, you know, one-way pairs, I, I don't think one-way pairs are automatically terrible, you know, if you take a really super high density city like New York City, all of the north-south streets are one way and almost all the east-west streets are one way, not all of them, but most of them. Um, and it, you know, it's transit and a rich street grid and all that. But I'd say for anything smaller than, than uh, Milwaukee, uh, or even Milwaukee, you, there's really no reason to have one-way streets. If, if you can avoid it, you're better off with two-way streets, because really, you want your street grid to serve its distribution function, not its throughput function. You want all that real estate in your downtown to come back to life. You want somebody that owns a building to say, you know, I really want to reopen that retail because uh, I think I can make some money. But so if everybody's whizzing by, you know, then it's... So is CNU and ITE going to get together and write another green publication? Well, we're doing an update of the of the uh, Green Book, and it was a huge victory when we got FHWA to say, this is where you go for flexibility for the Ashto guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, one-way pairs, when, when we've had sessions on one-way pairs at our meetings, uh, Peter Calthorpe is, is a big CNU founder and all that from Berkeley, and he's a big one-way pair fan, and he does a lot of work in China, where it'd be inconceivable in Shanghai not to have one-way pairs. Um, and then other people disagree with them completely. We have really